Craft breweries, or microbreweries, are beer manufacturers that produce a relatively small amount of beer. Craft brewers place an emphasis on flavor, quality, and attention to detail, rather than quantity, efficiency, or profitability. To them, beer is more than just a product. It's something to take pride in. Ontario craft brewers in particular uh, have an opportunity to provide uh, today's beer consumer with something that's a little bit more different, uh, has a little bit more taste, is uh, actually produced uh, with better quality and better ingredients. These brew masters, they, they take time, they put the energy and the effort into really producing good product. It's not just about trying to mass produce a beer, it's about really trying to figure out a recipe and make an art out of brewing. They try to make different flavors, try new ideas, they try to use high quality ingredients and not cheap out. The larger breweries use uh, 30 to 50 percent what are called adjuncts, uh, but largely because they're cheaper. Uh, so typically corn or rice, they could also use sugar. Uh, and uh, they also lighten the, uh, the flavor, uh, the body and the color of beer and provide a longer shelf life because the uh, protein levels are lower. You know that when you get a craft beer, you're getting a high quality product made by someone who's really dedicated to what they, what they do and really love, has a passion for brewing. For many, their gateway into the craft beer industry stems from a passion for quality beer. Angus Hiltz, a University of Waterloo student, brews his own beer at his student home in Waterloo. Not only does it save him money, but it's also a satisfying creative process. Uh, I first got into craft beer with uh, brewing with my dad back home. Um, we, we just started to get into that kind of beer tasting before we got into brewing, so we would get an idea of what sort of flavors there were out there and started to find that uh, the craft breweries offer uh, many different styles and many different flavors. and. Uh, Within each style and flavor, they, they tweak them depending on where you buy it from. So we started to try and taste different things, see what sort of things we could do at home when we brewed. Angus begins his brew by boiling water. He then adds grains to a bag and puts the bag in the water to steep. Throughout the brewing process, Angus takes notes for future reference. Next, Angus mixes dry malt extract in cool water. Dry malt extract is the sugar from the malted barley. Next, he removes the bag of grains from the boiling water and pours the malted barley mixture in. He then stirs it until it is fully mixed in with the boiling water. Then, he adds in the liquid malt extract, which serves the same purpose as the dry malt extract. This is just a different kind of malt. The next step is to add the hops, which gives the beer its bitter flavor. After the mixture, at this point called the wort, reaches the right temperature, Angus can add the hops into the mix. What you see here is the breaking of the proteins in the hops. Angus will add hops a couple more times throughout the boil to round off the beer's flavor. Next, it's time to let the wort cool down for a few hours. After that, the liquid is siphoned off into a cask while the solid is left behind in the pot. He then gives it a shake for about 5 minutes to get the oxygen moving. Next, he pours in the yeast which will convert the sugars into alcohol by a process called fermentation. Finally, he seals it up and will store it for approximately 4 weeks. After that four weeks is up, he'll be ready to bottle it. After a month of waiting and after a, you know, a few full days of work, it's great being able to you know, crack your first beer, obviously. But it's, it's also just neat learning about the process. You know, it's, it's such a complicated process and there's so many different aspects to it. And it's, it's really neat being able to learn about it and be able to, you know, it's just like it's the same as if you cook something or you, know, you make a fancy meal or anything. It's, it's rewarding in that after you're done, you know, you've got this something to be proud of and something that you've designed and made and watched mature and at the end of the day you get to enjoy it. Craft breweries use a similar process but tailor it to suit their individual styles of beer making. Their processes are of course performed on a larger scale but the core principles and values remain the same. While craft brewers produce a quality product, 
They collectively hold a significantly lower share of the market compared to the larger brewers such as Molson Coors and Sleeman Breweries. Depending on which study you look at, we're between about three and a half, three point eight to five uh, percent of the Ontario market. And whereas in British Columbia now it's fifteen percent. In two thousand six, uh, the LCBO um, opened up their doors uh, to a whole host of Ontario craft brewers and uh, traditionally prior to that they, they really weren't uh, really all that interested in Ontario craft brewers. There was a few select folks that they would continually bring in um, but uh, it was primarily sort of big box, big brands. Uh, and in 2006 they opened up their doors and uh, shortly after that uh, you probably saw the Ontario craft brewing industry grow from uh, somewhere around uh, 30, uh, 30 some odd craft brewers um, to, you know, probably today we're probably well north of about uh, 40, 45. We don't feel we're competing with other craft breweries so much because the market is big enough for all of us. Uh, we are competing with, the, in a sense, with the large breweries, but we can't really compete with uh, business to business head on because they have a lot of advantages, uh, much higher volumes and a lot more money for marketing and sales. It's an interesting industry to be within um, because as much as you would think that many more brewers come into your backyard and becomes that much more crowded, every single brewer is bringing to the table that's something that's completely different than the next guy, uh, which makes it equally interesting for Ontario beer drinkers uh, to have greater choice, larger choice, um, and it certainly helps keep all of us competitive. We only have close to 5% of the beer market. There's a, another 95% to go get. So for us, as a small group, to be fighting over that 5%, you don't see that as much. You see us try to get together, like having an organization like the Ontario Craft Brewers, or even, you know, we just borrowed some kegs this week from another brewery so that we could empty out our tanks. And we had another brewery, small brewery, come down and he needed to use our keg washer. Like, you try to help each other as best you can because we're not fighting amongst each other, we're trying to gain more market share. For the most part, we we do find ourselves as peers, but you know, um, competitive, competitiveness doesn't hurt either. Uh, it certainly keeps things interesting. It allows each of us as Ontario craft brewers to come together and talk about the newest and greatest things that we see happening within the world. Uh, what's happening from sort of stateside and the trends we're seeing making its way north to us. Um, so the rest of us, we, we do we do collaborate quite a bit. Um, we do talk. I think that the scene's pretty similar across North America. There's a lot of craft breweries starting to pop up. It's starting to grow and become more popular. Craft brewers take a different approach to marketing than the big producers of beer. The focus is not on competing with the products of larger breweries, but rather offering completely different products that may appeal to a different kind of consumer. Within our uh, craft beer portfolio, uh, we have a brand called Waterloo. It's our lead brand, uh, whether it's Dark, Amber, Pilsner, IPA. Waterloo Dark's near and dear to us. It's been part of Brick Brewing Company since uh, 1985. Um, it is a different brand. Uh, when it launched, it found itself in a space where today has become a little bit more crowded with dark lagers. Um, interestingly, a brand like Waterloo Dark is actually a light brand. And when I say light, I say light with regards to not necessarily in alcohol, but in flavor. So today's brands that you'll see in dark, ales, stouts, porters, tend to be higher alcohol, tend to be stronger, more hop, more porter-like, more coffee-like. Uh, Waterloo Dark is a quite a unique brand because it's actually a dark lager that is 5% alcohol and surprisingly light. So it finds itself in a very uh, interesting space for us because it doesn't necessarily want to compete against nor want to even be in the same arena as a brand like Coors Light, which is probably a big brand uh, as it, it is a big brand in, 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 uh, in Canada. For many, the focus is less on marketing and advertising, but more so on letting a quality product speak for itself. The biggest thing I'm finding with branding and marketing in general is actually putting the product in someone's mouth. So a lot of the stuff came down to going to festivals all summer, 
we're always trying to sponsor different events so that we can actually let people try the product invite them here to try the product I think that's the biggest key is just getting them to try the product the Ontario market will continue to expand through the devotion and passion for quality beer by the people who partake in it. I think the market in Ontario in 10 years will be 15%. However, at the end of the day, profitability is secondary to the love and dedication that craft brewers put into their work. You, know, you don't need to just go buy the cheapest thing at the liquor store. There's, there's other options out there. You can support locally, you can support high quality, and there, there are options out there for everyone. I was just telling people the other day how it's interesting. I find myself speeding into work in the morning, and as being one of the owners, like I, there's no set time. I need to be here. I just want to be here. There's always a ton of stuff. You need to have that passion, and you need to really love the products that you make, and really want them to turn out to be good. Obviously, the beer in general, and seeing people's reaction, and um, gaining fans is really, really one of the best parts about my job.